lift your voice and thank Him. Lift your voice and thank Him. Lift your voice and thank Him. your hands to God. your hands together for the living God. All right, we want to pray now and um, pray and ask God for his mercies, which is also one of the ways that we can fulfill our ministry. Turn your Bibles with me to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Verse number 1. The Bible says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Hallelujah. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy from God, we faint not. Amen. 
God has shown us mercy by placing us even in this church. How many of you believe that? God showed us mercy. And I want us to pray about the mercies of God. We really need God's mercies. His compassionate heart and that love that he has for us. Lift your voice and pray.
names of those who are owing for accommodation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, we'll mention those ones later. Amen. Amen. But I really want us to pray for the Lord's mercies. Amen. Amen. As we have received this, as we are in this ministry, we are also receiving the mercies of the Lord. And we are not going to faint. It means that we are not going to just go out of this place for a while and then a message will die out. No, but we are really going to keep this message and let this camp be a memorable one. I don't know what is happening. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, okay? Like, just pray. Pray. Lift your voice, pray to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. And the honor, oh God. Lord, 
we lift our hands. Yes, Lord. For you are great. You do miracles. There is no one. Sing, there is no one. You are great. You do miracles. There is no one. Sing, there is no one. For you are great. your hands to him. Don't let your hands be down. Oh, yes. Lord and the honor. Oh, God. Yes, Lord. You are great. Oh, yes. There is no one. There is no one, there is no one, there is no one. Yes. Yes, Lord.
Appreciate Pastor Frank for the time he has spent with us. Are you ready for this evening's session? Oh, you thought I was bishop? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Just so I think you must come and preach. They, they, are, they are expecting you. They are expecting you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So please pull out your notes. And ask your neighbor if you spelled that word correctly. You remember that word you were struggling with? Mama Doro. The snipers are in different levels. The highest level is Mamadoro level. Remember, I've told all of you, Get the audio, but the video. Amen. Make sure you get the video. It's very important. You need to watch. Because the anointing on this camp is very strong. And that is what is going to transform your life from the level you are at to the higher level. Remember, we are going to become VIPs. Very important pastor. We cannot talk about the ministry in your area without mentioning your name. Yeah. If you are in a Kwafo Hall, 
We cannot talk about the history of the ministry in Equafo Hall or uh, Volta Hall or where? Uh, John Nelson, Commonwealth. Yeah. You are aware that many, many pastors, elders, chief elders have passed through Commonwealth Hall. Yeah, but your story is going to supersede them. That is why you must get the video of this camp and watch it. Because all the 10 things are going to happen to you practically. To ensure that you are the minister you are supposed to be. Amen. Amen. And I have no doubt that tonight's session is going to take us to a higher level. I cannot wait for what is ahead. And uh, you need to be very alert and uh, make sure that there are no distractions. You know, at least there are some two guys here where you are sitting is not good because the lady, a lady is blocking your view. A certain lady is blocking your view. And you have chosen to sit in that area where she is sitting. One is around there, and one is somewhere here. So it's very important to, if you must relocate, try and relocate, because you must, you must have hundred percent concentration. Amen. Amen. Because you are changing. Can you feel that you are changing? Uh, I I can feel it myself. That I'm changing. I'm getting inspired, I'm getting ideas, I'm, uh, is it the one? <laughs> so, I want us to be very, very alert, amen. What was the last thing we learned before we left here? What? Through visions. Amen. Amen. And uh, how to fulfill your ministry through visions. I think when we were living here, I had a feeling that everybody's eyes are open now. And it's very important. And don't say that you are too young to have visions. Because Samuel was a little boy and he was having great visitations. Amen. Amen. And uh, a very powerful part of the session was the definition of the word see. Yes. You see and uh, you see and you learn. What are some of the definitions we saw? Somebody had a very good dictionary around here. Sorry. To understand intellectually. Amen. Amen. Which means that even in the ministry, your brain must be working. Amen. 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 We don't just set aside our minds. You know, the, 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 the higher you get to in the ministry, the more you use your mind. The, the use of the mind is very important. No, in fact, spirituality can also be defined as the use of the mind at a certain level. Yeah, it's not just you know, speaking in tongues and falling down and so on. If you, if you really look at the ministry and the life of our father, you see that he, he, his mind is on the work. Amen? Amen. Yeah, he, he deploys every intellectual virtue in him in the direction of the work, in the direction of the ministry. Amen. Amen. And that's why I said that in this community, we don't say that God has called us so we won't continue the thesis again. Uh, We have left school because some angels are chasing us out of the school. No. (laughs) Angels are chasing you out of the school, then maybe they are demons. 
Because sometimes the demons and angels, you can't really tell very well. <laughs> so we don't do that. We go to school. So when anybody is trying to tell you that this church, we don't encourage you to pass your exam and so on, you must tell the person that he's speaking from a very uninformed and, and, and uh, infantile or embryonic point of view. <laughs> He's speaking from a very embryonic point of view. Yes. He's speaking from a perspective of total ignorance. Because that is the exact opposite of the church we are in. And you see, it's a mind people have. That, you know, we are into you know, church, work, ministry. If you are in school, stop school and serve God. But that is not it at all. We'd rather go to school. Yeah, we finish school. And also, also... As we are going to school, um, by the grace of God, we are not into this type of third class, fourth class type of degrees. Amen. Yeah. I mean, as a first lover, you know, uh, there was a lady who had um, her, in a waxy, I think, four A's and three B's or so. And in the school, her friends were saying that um, she was under demonic attack and it's, that, it's like she, 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 she's under a curse, you know, to have four A's and three B's. And because in the school, you know, I mean, eight A's is standard, it's a standard petal. <laughs> no? If you get seven A's, we are managing you, six A's, you are out. But four is the means that there's a curse on your life. You need deliverance and this type of uh, yeah, this type of Wesley girls behavior. Uh, and we also have that spirit here. Yes, here also, if you get second upper, you must hide your certificate. We are into first class. Uh -huh. Receive some first class. Why? Why? Because to be a good pastor, your mind must be working. Yes. Your mind must be working. The ministry that does not yield itself to idiots. Idiots. No. The ministry and its treasures and its blessings yields itself to people who use their minds. Yes. The mind is working. Yes. And, and that is even how God expects us to relate with him. He says that, come to me. Come now, not tomorrow. Right now, come to me and let us reason. Let us use our minds, the mind. Come, when you come to God, it's not even just prayer or shabalabalaba. Reason. So, so, so with God, the use of the mind is an integral part of that relationship. The use of your mind. Come and let us reason. That is why here we believe in school. Yeah, we come for a camp, we go for a carnival, meetings, shepherds, this, but we must, you must also learn. Yeah, because you are going to be seeing a lot of things. Yeah, about 90% of your experiences will not be given to you, will not come through dreams and vision every day. Even, we don't even like it. Every day you have a vision. One message you must preach on Sunday. A vision came last night. An angel came and said, my daughter, Alice, teach on uh, what it means to be a shepherd. Every day, an angel is holding a book and has come to your room. Oh, 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 what type of behavior is that? We don't like it. You yourself must see. See the church. Look at the members. Your 28 members. See. That is the vision. Look at them, their behavior. They don't come to church well. Which book? By the grace of God, we have a plethora, plethora of material to use and to teach from. Don't wait for an angel to come and some, some vision. And it's powerful. It will, it, it will guide you. But seeing most of what God will tell you, he will tell you through what you are seeing with your physical eyes. Yeah. And whether you... It will be a vision to you or not depends on the speed of the 
cog wheels in your brain. The cog wheels, how they turn. Some of you, your own, you need grease. You might as pour oil inside. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, I mean, from now on, when people are graduating, we will stop asking what you got, what class, because it's assumed that everybody is into first class. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Receive first class. Amen. Receive first class. Amen. And also, a certain anointing came upon us as we're here, and I, I really feel that there's going to be a lot of proposals and marriages. Yeah. The first love, the first love sisters are going to be in high demand. Yes. They're going to be in high demand. So at very soon, to marry a first love girl, you must have first class. Yes. First class for first love. <laughs> Amen. So... If you, if you have got this type of second, lower, third class, and so on, you can, you, you can, you can go to uh, Oyarefa or this type of uh, La Baulishi and find some girls. Yes. Yeah, every, in every school, every school has got town girls. Every school. Whether it is Ashesi or... Uh, uh, Central, Legon, every school has got town girls who are alternatives, like, like what uh, Officer Nia Adams was saying to us yesterday. It's a, there's a high class one and there's a low class. Yeah. Every lady here is high class. Yeah. And we don't use this type of second, lower type of, because the girls themselves are getting first class. Yeah. And you are coming with second, lower. It's not like that. Yeah. So some of you better go to town. Yeah. When we were in school, in our school also, we had town girls. Yes. Apart from the Wesley girls, Holy Child, we had town girls. So certain boys or some low-class boys went to town. We called them Akajis. Akajis. Aimless. You see, where my school was or is, it's in a town called Kotokraba. So we say aimless Kotokraba girls. Mm-hmm. Aimless Kotokraba girls. You are going for them with your second lower. <laughs> Say amen. Are the brothers getting first classes already? Are you going to learn? Yeah, because the son of a crocodile is a crocodile. The son or the daughter of a cow is also a cow. The son of a snake is a snake. The son of Bishop Daguard Mills is a type of Bishop Daguard Mills who gets distinctions and credits and is topping in the class. Yeah. You cannot say that you are a daughter of daddy and you are coming with pass. Amen. So, so I'm talking about seeing, seeing. It, it, it took us back to the use of our minds. Yes. Intellectually, what? What's, what's, the, what's the definition? To understand intellectually. To understand intellectually. There are many levels of understanding. But when, when, you, when you take it to the level of the intellect, because you can, you can also understand something by the feelings you get emotional understanding. That when you're with a certain girl and you're having some feelings, it's, it's a type of direction to start moving. Uh-huh. That's why on the wedding night, we don't use intellectual understanding. Yes. When you call Bishop, he will ask you that. How are you feeling? Uh-huh. You don't say, oh, Bishop, I've, I'm at the zip level. What, what next? No, he'll ask you. You say, first of all, you say, foolish boy. <laughs> I said, is there any feeling in the room? Yes, there are feelings. So use the feeling. Use. So it's, sometimes feelings will be used to try and understand things. But it is our mind, the mind, the mind. For ministry, 
for those of us who are going to do well, it is your ability to pass by a field, see something, and understand. Yeah. And by the grace of God, you have entered the ministry at a time when there are many pastors ahead of you, many churches ahead of you, or who, who, which are already in existence. You can see the differences. And you see that the churches which are doing well have certain type of pastors. Yes, it's, a, it's always a type of pastor who has a certain type of church. And most of the time, 99.999%, those pastors are pastors who are close and well connected to Bishop Dagi Ward Mills. So that alone is your vision. That you cannot, I went to a church many years ago, this is a lighthouse church, seven years ago. The pastor's office, I saw, I saw, I was watching because my eyes, me, that's my vision. So I, t- I was looking and I, I, at a corner in the, in the office where a stack, they were in a transparent bag, polythene bag, s- stacks of rhapsody of realities in the pastor's office. Lighthouse, not assemblies, not Christ's embassy. So that pastor expect that he won't do well. And you shouldn't be like that. Yes. When we come to your office, we must see stacks. If we shouldn't even see stacks, the books should have been sent already, bought and shared. Yeah. To be well connected. That is the vision. Yeah. Some people start the ministry and there's no one ahead of them. They have to struggle, don't know what to do. But you, even, even, in, the, even in first love, there are pastors ahead of you already who are doing very well, who are blossoming in the ministry. Amen. You must see. You must see what makes a pastor sit by a church for three years and his members are still ten members. There are reasons. Yes. And one of the reasons is laziness. Yes. Laziness, slothfulness. In fact, that story um, Solomon told, that he went by a field uh, uh, and he saw that the, the walls were broken down, the place was overgrown with thorns and so on. The, the diagnosis he came up with was laziness, slothfulness, a little sleep, a little slumber. That is why we are closely going to link your academic credentials with even how you do well in the ministry. And most of the time, there is a correlation. Yeah, because if you are a lazy person in school, you are likely to be very lazy. Even when you have, you have to write exams, IAs, submit your thesis, do field work, lectures are standing on you, waiting for you to bring your, your, your thesis, you have got exams to write. Even that one, you are not learning. You are so lazy, you can't even carry yourself to learn. How much more in ministry where there's, nobody is going to mark you, nobody, there's no exam to write in a certain sense, you are just there. So you see that in the church, some are going to have four members, seven members, 70 members, 700 members, 10 members, 200 members, 1,000 members. It is all a certain type. And may your eyes inform you. May your eyes, when you see, and all these examples abound in the church. They're in the church. You, you will see your type in the church. You will see. Yeah. The way you are, your type is in the church. There's a pastor just like you. Or what you want to be like. There's a pastor like that. Lighthouse is a very nice church. Any type of pastor you want to see, you will see some. <laughs> Any type. A lazy lady pastor. Is, is, it, is it lady pastor or lazy pastor? <laughs> what do you say? Lazy pastor. Or what? Lady. Ah, okay. okay. Lady lazy pastor. <laughs> there, there are some there. They are hard-working, very anointed pastors. Yes, they, they are all there. It's the anointing we are using. And you see that. You see pastors, reverends, reverends who have got 13 members. Yes. Wearing a collar, going to a church with 40 members, five years of pastoring a church. It's called reverend. And you also see a reverend who is wearing his collar is going to a lighthouse branch of 700 members. May that be the type, the category you are going to minister in. 
That's why visions are very important. You will see that anything you are seeing around or you want to be, God will show you the vision. Mm. He will show you your future. That the way you don't pray, laziness, you can't even go out to go and wait on God. He will show you a pastor. He will let you work in the den office or some office somewhere where data on churches will come to you. That is the vision. Yes, the, 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 the den office, the, the data on the churches, that is the vision. God is not is in a hurry. He won't wait for you to, to go and sleep in the night. It's too late. In the afternoon, he will show you a vision in the office. You see a church which has been pastored by somebody for seven years. The church has got 38 members. Three are sick. 14 have gone to school. <laughs> <laughs> But you will be different. Yeah. I said you will be different. Yeah. As you move out, you will see that all the, all the differences in ministry will be staring at you. And we are saying that that is the vision you have. What's the other definition of C? To grasp mentally. You see, once again, mentally. The first one was what? Intellectually. It's all up here. It's all up here. To grasp your ability to grab. That is why we go to school. Yes. We don't go to the university to get a profession. We go there to learn how to learn, to develop our minds, to grasp things, to grasp. When your ministry is not doing well and, and, and you are being corrected, you will grasp it. Yes, some people, as you are advising them, you, do, you, you don't even finish. In the middle of the advice, I understand what you are saying. This is true. You are right. You are right. I'm not pastoring my church well. I remember when, when we had our churches in Crete here. Was it here or there? There. There, yes. There were pastors, uh, elders who would come and sit there. Bishop Saki has to write a diagram, draw diagrams, explain with diagrams, use slides to explain to them how useless they are. And see, some of them will come and sit there. They have, they, have, they have crampled their face like kitchen foil. Kitchen foil. They were all there. It was the table was here. Different. Some to you see that when they come, you can say, this person understands what is going on. Yeah. Understands it. His answers is this and that. See, it is clear. The mind is working well. It can grasp concepts. Yes. And I'm saying that you, you watch it. As we progress, you see that there is a correlation between how well you did or did not do in school and your output on the field. But you see, even if you didn't do well, you can change. Yeah, you can change. I, because you see, I believe that first love, lighthouse, and even ministry under Bishop Dagwood Mills is actually a university in itself. Yes. So, what you didn't get in Legon or USC, if you can change your mind, if you can change your mind, that's why the Bible says that repent and be baptized. Repent and be baptized so that you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repent, change your mind. If you can change your mind, things will change for you. Because some of you, you know already that, I mean, we thank God for first love. Because before first love, you were really wasting your life in school. But now you've come back to your senses. Is there anybody here who has come back to his senses? Can I see your hand? Yeah. And that may be your turning point. We are going to have great... See, a time is coming. All the mega church pastors in Lighthouse will come from first love. I'm telling you. Yeah. First love. Mega church pastors. There will be pastors. Pastors from... ABMTC, pastors from this cause, this, but the first love guys have, will have some freshness, freshness, some, 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 some deal of heaven is on them because, because they are intelligently grasping the things they are being taught. May your mind work well. May your mind work well. What is the other definition of C? To what? To notice what is being pointed. That was Bishop Saki's problem. Pointing things out to elders. 
Some will not notice. Some will come and sit there thinking that if they start crying, we will change our minds. But we didn't change our minds. You can't sit there and just start crying. It's like, oh. Well, but some people can see. You see, notice what is being pointed. And in, and, in, and in Lighthouse, a lot of things will be pointed out to you. Yes. Even as you are reading the book, the book itself is pointing things out to you. Yeah. You don't even need a pastor. Oh, you don't need a pastor. You, the book itself, we, after, after a chapter in the mega church, you understand why you are a bad pastor. <laughs> That's as if your mind is working well. May your mind work well. Yeah. I said, may your mind work well. Yeah. Another definition of C. To what? To interview. Wow. When you interview someone, you are not just asking questions and receiving answers, but you are interacting with the environment of the person. Yeah. Even the person's posture speaks to you, the interviewer. To, to see means to interact. Interact. Your mind is, is, is interrogating. It's, it's, it's a type of mind. Yeah, there are some people whose minds are dull, sluggish, phlegmatic minds, immobile type of mind, a mind that even you must, you must, you must, you must set it on fire before it melts. <laughs> Can't see. But your mind from this camp is going to change. Yeah. As Bishop was preaching, I could see that there are some areas I was refusing to see some things. And now my eyes are very wide open. Yeah. So to see means to interview. Interview. May your eyes be healed. Yeah. May your vision be healed. Yeah. And you know, now I have come to believe strongly that God is going to show us a lot of things. Yeah. Yes, a lot of things. A lot. You see, you see how your big sister's life has become. You see how that girl's life has become. Yes, how that boy, your classmate, how he has been on drugs and his mind is off somewhere. All those things, God will show you. God will, he, he, it is your vision. It is your vision. It is your vision. For me, my, I know about life, academic life without Christ, and academic life with Christ. When I didn't have Christ, I was getting 5%, 16%, 40%. That was my highest. When I went home, got born again, came back to school, the same school, the same classmates, I began to get my 70s, 80s, 90s. Within two years, Form 4, Form 5. I got born again in Form 3. Form 4 and Form 5. By the time my O-level was about to start, I was a distinction student. Yes, a person was getting 5%, 16%. Because life with Christ has a way of making your mind work supernaturally. Yes. It makes your mind work supernaturally. It is only in recent times, I mean, a couple of a year or two, when Bishop taught us, was there a homecoming or ISI on uh, um, the, 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 the anointing, demystifying the anointing? ISI, yes. Now I, I understood that what we call anointing, is it anointing or anointment? Anointing. What we call anointing, 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 really about 70% of it is how your mind is working. Yes, anointed. Oh, the, 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 the girl is anointed. You see, when Ida is singing, you see anointing. But it is mind work, the mind. How to remember the lines. How to sing it well. Yes. How she stands to sing. She, she will just come. Take the microphone and come. See how she stands, show the microphone and stand to sing. It, it, it's somebody's mind. She has been counseled. And you come and you, a, a woman wearing a skirt, you come and stand and say, yeah, yeah, Jesus, Lord, give me love, I need thee, oh Jesus. And those who are in front are seeing things they didn't plan to see. It's a type of vision I am not prepared to see. Even to sing, you need your mind. Yeah. Seven, the seven spirits of God. Four over seven. Please find those who did math. What percentage? Four over seven. It's what? 60% and more. 60% plus. It's the mind. The spirit of wisdom. 
It's a mind. Spirit of knowledge. Spirit of counsel. Spirit of wisdom. Wisdom, knowledge, counsel, and understanding. Four. Then we have the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord and the might. Might. And which I say, you know, (laughs) patapa. Yeah. Those are the seven spirits. God, 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 the seven spirits. You see, those days when to qualify as a pastor, you must be a school dropout. Those days are over. Now, to qualify as a pastor, you must be an A plus student. That is the person who is now a pastor. Yes. Those days, 30 years ago, if you couldn't go to university, then the ministry becomes an alternative to your failure. An alternative. But in this era, we go to school, we do law, and we come out and we are full time pastors. Yeah, we go to school, we, we, we study medicine, we specialize, we do, and we are full time pastors. Yes, the mind, because out of the seven spirits, four of them are the spirit of the mind. Counsel, knowledge, wisdom, and what? Understanding. It's a spirit. So an an anointed pastor is not a pastor who speaks as if he has gone to eat chili pepper. I say the power of God. Three people. Like, I, I, I say, if you read Exodus chapter 14, I feel the Lord was saying to Moses, 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 in the name of Jesus, I feel somebody is receiving something. There's a, there's a sister at the back there. Receive the power of God. What was that? What was that? Yeah. When Bishop is preaching, he's, he's taking his time. But anointing is dripping like, 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 like oil. Coconut oil. Nobody's mind is going to be on retirement. Amen. Yes, from today you will interview your environment. Amen. You will inter- That's why I, I said it yesterday. That as you sit here, ask yourself, what am I doing here? Is it a banking seminar? Is this a symposium for nurses? What, is, what are we doing here? If you think just a little, you see that God has brought you to a place to make you into an, not just a pastor, an anointed pastor. That is why, if you think a little, if you can interview your environment, interrogate the atmosphere, you see that there is something here. That's how to see. That's how to see. That's your vision. You can see. That's how I'm sitting here. Who's on your left? Who's on your right? She may have been your former girlfriend, but now she's an elder. She's an elder. Are you feeling some anointing in the hall at all? Are you feeling some anointing? That is what God wants to do to you. We interview. It's a very beautiful word to interview. A mind or eyes, eyes, eyes that see and ask questions. Eyes that see and ask questions. If someone has brought you to Lighthouse, you are in first love. I mean, look at it carefully. What type of life is here? Are we destroyed? Are we depressed? Are we, having a, are we living a backward life? Do we look depressed? Is it like some joy has been taken from our lives? When you see us, don't you see that this is the optimum lifestyle a normal human being must live? Why do you want to live a life every day when you wake up by 10 a.m. you are leaking semen from, from last night's rendezvous? Or oh, you don't understand what I'm saying? I said you are leaking what? Is that the life you want to live? Gonorrhea infested semen? Chlamydia infected semen? HIV infected, even, even Ebola is in the semen. Is that the life you like? Ask the nearest sister. Is that what you are looking for? No. The atmosphere is pure. The atmosphere is, if you can just interview the atmosphere, ask questions. What is happening here? 
For how many years has my pastor been a pastor? Has he been a pastor for six months? Or just one year? How many years has he been doing this work? And what life is he living? Those who are with him, my lady pastors, how is their life like? Then you can also see that, ah, me too, if I join them, I will be like that. That is what Saul, uh, 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 Samuel told Saul. He said, when you are going, you are going to meet some prophets coming down the hill of God. They will be prophesying. Join them. Join them. Join them and do what they are doing. And the anointing will come upon them. Will come upon you. Yes. And Samuel, uh, Saul joined them. He joined them. That is the group you have joined. You have joined pastors. Interview. Just think. Of, you have joined pastors. You have joined elders. Anointed people. Lady pastors. Pastors, reverend. This is the group you have joined. Yes. Someone said, join them. Do what they are doing. And he joined them. Began to prophesy with them. Suddenly, the spirit came upon him. So it became a proverb in Israel that is Saul also among the prophets. Is Belinda also among the lady pastors? Is Mama Dorothy, formerly of Ikeja Sheraton, is she also among the lady reverends? Is the serial fornicator called Nanayao? Yeah. Is he also now among the elders? Yeah. How does it come about? By joining the people. So as you sit here, you have joined a group. <laughs> not a group of clubbers, not a group of drunkards, not a group of thieves, not a group of fornicators. You have joined a group of decent girls and boys. Decent. And it is happening to you also. Amen. No matter what your past is, no matter how far you went, what you have done with your life, God is reviewing and renewing and renovating and restoring and starting again. That is the life. You watch it. Even your mother won't believe that you have changed. You won't believe it. Your mother won't believe it. A wild girl like you. Just by interviewing. Just by interrogating, just by asking, finding out, this is where I am. What has happened to me? What has happened to all those who came around? Have they been destroyed? Are they psychiatric patients? Have they become paupers? Have their marriages, even, even just by being around, you will marry. Because some of you, the environment you were in, there's no marriage. Interview, just ask around. Even your house, your family, your sisters, they are not married. Some have got two children with four fathers. Three children with five fathers. Some of them, one child, they can't find the father. Is that what you want to become? Why don't you want to be like a, a chief me? He's here with his wife and children. Mama Dorothy, are you going back to Sheraton now? Are you here? Yes. Permanently here? Yes. Clap for Mama Doro. Mama Doro. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. You must interview. Ask questions. So just feel the temperature of your friend's brain. Is, is, is it cool? Or it's working? Is it working? Is it working? Is that brain working? <laughs> Clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Say what a, what a camp. Until your life is done And if 
you love me, obey the great commission. Build churches everywhere. In every town, every province, every city. Yeah, yeah. Africa shall be saved.
Jennifer. Is she gonna, 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 ready to bend? Devil! Is she gonna, 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 ready to bend? Yeah, me. Is she gonna, 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 ready to bend? If he! is what? How to? Number two is what? Number three is what? Through what? I can't hear you. Number four is what? Through the call. Number five is what? Through what? Number six is what? The mission. Wow, that's number what? What's your mission? What's the first thing a shepherd is going to do? Huh? Wow. Are you going to find sheep? Are you a sniper? How many are you killing at a time? Is the enemy going to be demoralized? Are you going to take out kennels? Officers? Officers? Eh? Hey! Major generals? Kennels? Wow! And then who else? What else? Number eight? Seven? Is what? Visions. Has your blindness been healed? Yes. Is your blindness healed? Yes. Wow. Blindness is gone in Jesus' name. Amen. Number eight is what? How to fulfill your ministry through the gifts. Amen. Amen. Now, the gift of God is the is the thing that now comes to really change your ministry into the higher gears. And when you have the gift, you begin to stand out. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Amen. Amen. You know that you were Gentiles. All right? Carried away. Amen. Amen. Now verse 7. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to everybody to profit with all. Amen. Amen. Now, the next very important thing is that gifts, gifts that are being given, are you there? Gifts that are being given are fantastic things. Now, a gifted person, many of us are gifted, but you would be surprised that many people don't use their gifts. Do you understand? So, what are the gifts? The nine gifts of the Spirit. But at the end, you see a lot of gifts there. Verse 28 God has set some in the church, 
which are the gifts. First what? Can somebody read it? Can somebody read it? And God had set some in the church. First, apostles. Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healing. Helps. Mm. Governments. Diversities of tongues. Are all apostles. Yeah. Are so all this is the list of gifts. These are gifts you can have. And what it is is that the name of the gifts here fall into a category of great um, gifts like helps. So many things fall under that. Government, so many things fall under that. So when you put these ones together, everything is there. Helps and governments, you know, everybody fits in somewhere. Now, a gift is an ability and you have to use your gift very, 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 very well. Especially if you locate something. Now, how do you know that you are gifted? Or how do you know that you have a gift? You know you have a gift when you do something that others can't do. As easily as you do. The same thing. Are you listening? So, maybe Somebody can sing. You can't sing at all. Do you see? At all. And your person is able to sing. That is a gift. Somebody can... I mean, even preaching. Everybody can preach. But then you start to see that somebody is able to preach in a way. You know? And people appreciate the gift. So giftedness is... Something that God gives at a point. And sometimes the gift has been there for a long time, but you must develop the gift and use the gift. Okay? Now, in fulfilling your ministry, I will tell you that for me, the gift is not so important as you may think. It's important. But from what I have seen, many people who don't have gifts do better than people who have gifts. Yeah. Like a man, a man from a rich family. A man from a rich family a child from a rich family. They are even the ones who don't go to school. And they are the ones who don't make the use of the gift that they have had. True. So, if, you see, this is, it is around this word gift that people resign from the ministry. So me, I, I'm, not, I'm not gifted. I'm not like this person. I'm not like this person. I'm not like this person. But what we have said so far, just how to fulfill the ministry through mercy or the love, through the separation that has happened, through Iris, through what? Through the will, the mysterious will, and then through what? The call, and through the purposes, and through the mission, just do something, just do. You'll be fulfilling your ministry. Yeah. And it was in 1988 that I believe that I received a gift of a certain type to preach and to teach, which is what we are all enjoying. The campus we are in is part of that gift. Now, because it's that gift that produces so many things. Now, what I what I want to say is that most of us have either no gift or probably a small gift. And 
If you are going to wait to say that I am gifted before you start doing anything, then, Dr. Go, you want to take their resignation letters now. You can, you can, you can receive the letters now. And, uh, you can bring the letters now and leave the camp. There's a car at the car park waiting to take you home. People who have gifts, hmm? many of them don't use the gift. I can see why God would rarely give gifts to people. I can see why God wouldn't share many gifts to people. Because when he gives gifts to people, they, they, they even despise it. Because a gift, when you have a gift, when you go to, excuse me, excuse me, the example. When you go to we do you think you are using a gift? People who have gifts, it's like they are urinating. They don't notice anything they are doing unusual. Yeah, they don't, they don't, if you can sing, you don't even know that you can sing. They don't even notice that they can sing. <laughs> if you can dance, you don't even know that you can dance. You just dance. Yeah. You start to see that you are gifted when you see that people cannot do what you are doing. Are you with me? Yeah. But those who have it, they don't use it. They don't use it. Most of the people don't use it and don't use it much. And many people don't like the gifts they have. The story of the gift is in Matthew 25. Is the story of the talents that God gave everybody two talents, ten talents, five talents, and what did they do with it? Hmm? Number one, fear to use it. To sing well, you see, you need to overcome fear. Because you can make a mess of yourself in front of the people. And everybody knows that you were trying to sing. <laughs> everybody knows that you were trying to sing. Um, it didn't work. And then the fear of shame and disgrace will keep you back. If you are going to start a church, everybody knows you are trying to start a church. If you are preaching for the first time, everybody knows you are trying to preach. Isn't it true? So there's a lot of fear with people who have gifts. All right? And because of that, a lot of people don't use their gifts. A lot of people don't use their gifts. But if you use your gifts, you know, you fulfill your ministry. Your gift will make, because we've already gone seven stages. Your gift will make your ministry catapult further towards the fulfillment of your the deposit that has been given to you. Yeah. When I received a gift to teach, there was a sister in the church. I'm sh- I don't know if one of her children is here. I don't know if he has any children here. Is he here? Ah. That's, that's, that's her, her son. She's the first person who saw that I was anointed. Yeah. She wrote her, a letter to her friend. She wrote a letter to her friend and told her friend that brother Doug is different, sounds different, says something about him. Different. That's, that's her son. <laughs> huh? It's amazing. Everybody's child is here. <laughs> what, what, is his, what is his name again? David, David Doug. Yeah, David Doug. Name after me. 
Wow. Yeah. Huh. It, it, it augments what you are doing. But you need to overcome fear. Amen. Amen. That's, that's her son. That is her son. <laughs> yes. Wow. And from then, there was something just a little more than the ordinary. Just a little more. It is that same gift that turned into books. It's that same gift that makes people read the books. It's that same gift that makes people understand the books. Do you understand? Mm. It's that same gift that makes me be able to have camps. When people come to attend camps and programs like that. So, thank you, young man. And so people are afraid to use their gifts. Then, people, and help, help, every, almost everything falls under helps. Sing, there's no singing gift in the Bible, but helps. Any kind of help, anything that you can say is helpful. There is an anointed one of it. Yeah. Anything that is helpful, there's a gift of that thing. Yeah. But people don't. You see, you despise it because it's natural. You know, as I've reached this point, this is the point where I feel that some time ago I would have said, oh, you must have a gift, you must have a gift. But I don't really feel that way. I feel that whether you have a special gift or not, if you follow how to Fulfill your ministry through mercy. Through separation. Through the mysterious will of God. Through the call of God. Through the purposes of God. Through the mission. Through the visions. Whether you have any special augmentation... Because I'll tell you that uh, if Ida was not here to sing, I would sing the songs myself. Oh, yeah. I just have to practice. I can sing most of the songs that she sings with if I have to time to practice. Yes, I will just practice. And I'll, I will be able to sing them if I really wanted to speak melodiously. And it will take me a long time and waste my time. <laughs> Amen. Amen. A gift makes room for a man and causes him to come before great people. When you become gifted, you start to move up the ladder. That is why it's not good to be giftless. Yeah. But you are already very far advanced in the ministry, even without any gift. If only you walk in what you have, you will be fulfilling so much already. Then people hide. Matthew 25, verse 25, he said, And I was afraid, and I went and I hid thy talent in the earth. Today, as I speak, there are many hidden talents. Whenever I put anybody out here to try and sing, I'm trying to unearth hidden talents. Because nobody is already made. Everybody will have to be unearthed from the hiding place. Amen. Amen. So people actually hide because they don't want to. Amen. Amen. Then also, the gift does not work because people find 
faults instead of admiring things. So, as you sit there, you'll be finding faults with somebody who is preaching, singing, dancing, acting. And as you keep finding faults, you even become more frightened of trying yourself. Instead of admiring and seeing what is good, you become more scared of trying yourself to do something. Because to use a gift eh, is scary. Even if you are gifted. Because you can make fun, fun, funny, funny foolishness of yourself, even though you are gifted. Amen. Amen. So I was afraid. I hid myself. Amen. Amen. May your gift come out in Jesus' name. Amen. Then also, many people, when they have a gift, have small gifts, little gifts. Wow. And because of your small gift, you don't want to use it. Amen. Amen. Now, one talent, the man who had one talent, all right, the man who had one talent, what happened to him? He did not use it. All those who don't use their gifts despise the smallness of their gifts. And it looks small to them. Amen. Are you there? I had one talent. Amen. Then, number five or number six, five, is people are too proud to accept Look at me, look at me, stop writing, stop writing, stop typing, you listen to me. If I want to give a lecture in a school, I'll tell you that I want to give a lecture. I'm not giving notes. I am telling you that, I'm explaining to you why people don't use gifts. And one of the reasons is that they think they are, you see, like when I was sharing about the visions, the vision that you are being given you find, you find it not a dream. You want Jesus to pull a chair and sit by you. It's not going to be like that easily. You get it? I'm still waiting for Jesus to appear to me like that. I'm going ahead with what? Look at my, one of the biggest part of my ministry, which is the books. I just believe I, I should write a book. That's all. No vision, nothing. It was after that I was looking for more direction, I was surprised to be, get some attention that is the books. I never thought anybody would ever read my but I just felt God wanted me to and I should just do it so that I don't have any problems. <laughs> yeah. There are things that I do, I don't, I don't want problems, so I just do them. Wow. wow. Now, we come to the greatest junction that all gifted people come to. And almost everybody here probably has some kind of a gift, either hidden or whatever. But this is the junction. How many want to know the junction? The junction of giftedness. This is the junction where gifted people divide into two groups. 90% go to the left and 10% to the right. This is the junction of gifted, where what happened to gifted people. The junction of gifted people is the junction of laziness and hard work. Laziness and hard work. He says, thou slothful servant. You had a gift too, but you were lazy. Slothful means lazy. Many 
gifted people are divided into two groups, lazy and gifted and hardworking and gifted. When you meet hardworking and gifted, which are just 10%, you get confused as to is it a gift or is it the hard work? And when you meet lazy and gifted people, you see amazing gifts, but a certain lack of discipline that you wonder can a gift be in a person without any discipline at all? <laughs> wow. So my prayer for you today, Christian friends, is that you will be hardworking. Because if you are not hardworking, you cannot, if you are, if you are a musician, you cannot sing better without hard work. You cannot remember the words of a song without hard work. You cannot improve on your singing without hard work. You cannot get rid of bad habits in music without hard work. You cannot make a recording without hard work, no matter how gifted you are. So, although Andre Crouch received the gifts of 2,000 songs, to turn it into an album, that's the hard work part. So when you see the productions, you see three years, another one, three years, another one, three years, then 11 years, no album, then one, like that. But he said he had 2,000 songs. But we don't have 2,000 recordings. And I, I actually, I heard once, I heard him singing a song once and I realized that he had not recorded that song. It was a nice song. And I thought to myself, wow. Do you remember when he came to Ghana? He sang something. I heard him just a short snippet. I said, wow. The gift goes along with hard work or that's it. So a lot of people who are gifted become like ungifted people because they are lazy. Yes. True. If you are gifted at cooking, it takes it's a lot of hard work to cook. If you are gifted at being friendly, by all means there will be some time you will be depressed. It takes energy to rise out of your depression. And say, Hello. <laughs> Although you don't feel like it at all. Huh? This is the crossroads. Oh, the gift. You will not believe it. I was once with a man who was very, very close with Andre Crouch. He said, I go with him. I stayed in his house. I go everywhere with him. I said, I went to America. He said, he's a very nice person. He, he stayed with him, even left his house for him. He was there going up and down with him. But I said, that when he left him, he doesn't call, he doesn't communicate, so he, he didn't stay in church. But he was very close to him. But that is it. I'm sure he was also a sanguine. I don't know. Yeah. He told me, I'm glad my friend like this. I said, really? He said, oh, yeah. Very close. I stayed with him for a long time in his house. For Vivaldi to sing the way she sings in Venda, Sutu, Shangan, Sipedi, and what the language is in Senegal? Wolo, Wolof, Creo, this, that, Hausa, Yoruba, French, huh? Portuguese, French, Cree, English. 
no amount of just giftedness without working hard can make the gift useful. This is the junction. Your gift becomes useless. All the gifted people are useless because they are lazy. Thou, I didn't write the Bible. The thou slothful and wicked servant. Yeah. Ra. And their ministries amount to nothing. True. And a lot of people don't use it. They don't use what they can do. So it's amazing. It's amazing. And that is the point at which you'd be surprised that God now picks people who even he has said in the word he shouldn't be pastors. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the people that God used, you even wonder how God himself chose that. He said the person shouldn't be a striker, he shouldn't have two wives, he shouldn't be this, he shouldn't be this, he shouldn't be this. You'll be surprised. God will use somebody with three wives to minister powerfully as you are there with your holiness and one wife. And he has given you a gift, you won't use it. Be there. True. So you better open your mind, open your heart, open your soul. And to me, it doesn't really matter whether you think you have a gift or not. But the day you see that I do seem to have some extra something. You see, the gift is like something extra. Let's say, come, I give you a gift. After church, Solomon, I give you a gift. Everybody may be going home with nothing in their pockets. Because I gave you hundred CDs. See me after church, I'll give you hundred CDs. Because I, because I gave you. Actually, if somebody has hundred CDs, give me hundred CDs. Anybody give me hundred CDs? Yeah. You know, those of you, those of you who don't like sitting on the aisle, you, you, you lose a lot. I need hundred CDs quickly. Yeah, Martha, come. Yeah. Okay, Solomon, that's your money. Put it in your pocket. Put it, put it in your pocket. Now, come. Come. Now, this brother has a gift of 100 CDs. Now, what does he have? He has a little extra of something. Come. Isn't it true? Just a little extra of something. That's all. That's a gift. Just a little extra of something. Yeah. Most gifted people have just a little extra above, like that was freely given to them. They didn't work for just a little something. Now he's got a gift of a hundred cities. Brother, got just a little extra. Isn't it not fantastic? How many would like to be him? No, he cannot share it. He cannot share it. He cannot share it. He's going to use it. It's a little extra of something. But if you are lazy, you are not hardworking, or you are wicked, we will never know. Thou wicked and slothful servant. Wickedness. People don't use their gifts. But I wouldn't say there's so much difference between Solomon and the rest of you. Even though he has an extra hundred cities now. Maybe you don't have anything at all. But it doesn't make like a difference between us. Though you are dead and he's alive. Oh, you are all alive. You can all walk. You all eat. You all go back. So even though he has a gift, it's not making so much of a difference although there is a difference but not much yeah if he is wise and he knows how to use this money it may turn later into something more 
But it is not, the difference is not like you are in darkness, you are in a coffin, he is alive, he is in Laboni, and you are in Osu Cemetery. In under the no 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 it's not it's that depends the difference is not that much the difference is not that much even though I am not a TSA you know what is a TSA talented solo artist even though I'm not a TSA if I work very hard I can sing a lot of songs I can and I can play if I work hard it's just about working hard part and also what I have to do. So a gift is just a little extra of something. Preaching, then one day, well, we don't, you don't need a gift to preach. Everybody's supposed to preach. You don't need a gift to be a shepherd. Everybody's supposed to be a shepherd. You don't need a gift to have a call. They are all different things. You can be called, but no gift. Giftless, but with a call. Giftless, but you are with a, with a call. So you may not stand before great men or you may what you have, you're called clear. And then you may be given a mission. Most people don't even do the mission. <laughs> Why should they give you a gift, something extra? Small mission. You were, when I was in Kolebo, I was given a commission. I was talking to people, preaching, going to Kolegono, witnessing, going to bring people. Is it any surprise that God would give me a gift and select me in Suhum when I'm praying in the night? Select me and give me a gift. Should it surprise you when there were many even better, holier Christians than me there? But it's like the little mission that you have, the separation, the salvation, the mercy does not mean much to you. All this halabaloo about gift. I mean, if I knew my gift and Bishop, I don't have any gift. You don't have a gift, but you have a call. That's why I say you fulfill your ministry to your call. You fulfill your ministry to the purposes of God. The mercy that has been shown you. The separation that has been done. Before we come to gifts. It's the gift now that will start to make room. It's through the gift that I have been invited to nations and to places all over the world. But for years I worked, no one ever invited me. Ever. You know? No one, two things. No one ever invited me and no one ever gave me an offering. And if I was ever invited and I preached, they would hardly give me peanuts to take home. Nothing. For years and years. Suddenly one day, it changed. Just in a day, it was, it was different. I'll be there. This one is inviting. This one is inviting. This one. I don't know you. Yeah. And then they began to appreciate the gift more and more and more. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So the gift, you see, Solomon is not much different from you. Will you agree? Yeah. Uh, do you have some money in your pocket? You don't have any money at all. At all. Pardon? Offering. Yes, how much do you have? Check, check how much you have. And you, how much do you have? You have only one city in this whole world. No, tell the truth. Otherwise, something... Only 100 CDs. No, I'm not saying what offering do you have. You don't have money. Stand up. I'm, 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 I'm making a point. Do you have any money? Yes. You may, I mean, multiply it. You have how much? Let's see. 15. 15 CDs. Good. You have how much? Only one CD. Okay. Do you have any money? Nothing at all. You have? Bring. You have how much? Your big bag. Only five CDs. <laughs> Come. Only five in the whole world. Not the whole world. Right here, you have only five cities. How about you? You don't have... Well, your money is where? Where is the money? It's in the... In your bag. And how much is in your bag? 20 cities. Stand up. 25. And then, how much do you have? 27 cities. Very good. Stand up. 27 cities. How much do you have? Yeah. No. Back, what about around here? About 40 CDs. Yeah. So if they, what, you have some money in your bag? Yes. yes. Five CDs over there and one CD here. <laughs> and then you have how much? <laughs> 15 CDs. You have how much? Five CDs here. You have how much? 20 CDs. Okay. And he has, 
Listen, and he has 100 CDs. So, he has a little something, a little more. That's the point I'm trying to make. It's not as though like he has $1,000 or $10,000. You know, he has 100, he has a little more. This one has 27 CDs. This one has 40 CDs. And he's got 100. And then you have how much? 15. And you have how much? One CD. Yeah. How much is watching? How much is watching? Five. Five CDs work. Will five CDs work? Mo- huh? Yes, but roughly. Five CDs can work. Night market. So, so notice, notice. Notice, all of them can have some watchy, except. uh, (laughs) The difference is not so much. It's not as though he can go and buy a second hand car, a home second hand car, or even a new car, costing. 30,000 Ghana cities. He cannot. He's nowhere near a car. He's just a few extra plates of watching. Yes, about 20 plates of watching more. That's what it means to have a gift. And even without the gift, you can go so far. You watch all these guys who get home to where they came from. They will all be next week. You see, they will all be alive. Breathing, flowing, I mean, doing everything normal, even without this gift that has been given to this guy. So as you are here, you'll be saying, if I had the gift that this brother had, if I would have that, I would have that. No, 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 no. No, please, please. The gift, the gift you have, can bring you before great men. That's if he uses it well. Now, how could he use his gift very well? Do you see? Now, I need, I, need, I need an envelope. I need an envelope. Can I have an envelope? An empty envelope? An empty envelope. Now, brother, this is an envelope, okay? Um, Put 50 CDs in it. 50 CDs. 50 CDs. Get a pen. You see, I'm making him use his gift very well. You watch and see. Get a pen. No, seal it. Seal it. You are are going to sow a seed. I, I need another envelope. I need another envelope. Huh? You want to use Daisy's envelope? Okay. All right. Now, take um, a pen. Put one envelope in your pocket. I'm making him use his gift very well. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, that's um, has uh, what do you call it, Doctor Bishop Ogo? Has it been a blessing to you? I mean, at the camp and yes, Bishop. Does he know you personally? Only met him once. I've never asked. Okay. Ra- write you, write his name and go and sow a seed in his life. Yeah. Let's go, let's go. We're going to sow a seed. 
You see, he's using his gift very well. He's taking half of the gift. And uh, you, want to, you want to say one or two things to him as you present? Yes, Bishop. Okay. Um, Bishop, um, I don't know you personally. I've, I've never as in, had a one-on-one -on -one interaction with you before. But you, you, you inspire me. Because, because, because for me, I've had many fears about combining church and academics. But seeing people like you in the ministry and doing it, I... I'm always inspired that I can always do something for the Lord. And, 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 and moreover, I've realized that today, when the times we've had, you've shared with us, is different from other camps because I, I, I don't know, but it seems it's quite different from how you've been sharing things with us for the previous camps. So I think, I think I'm, 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 I'm being blessed, yes. <laughs> so that's what I have to say. So, Bishop, I want to present this as a seed I'm sowing to your life for being a great blessing to me and for all of us over here. Did, did you write your name on the envelope? Write, write your name. You write, write your name so that he'll he, he remember you. So much, Bishop. Do, 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 yeah, okay, he wants to say something. Well, Brother Solomon T. Yeah. Phone number 'ly touched by the show of appreciation um, and the love that has come to me through this gift. I feel very honored and uh, in the first place I give glory to God for any virtue or any gift you've seen in me. It's by the grace of God through my father and my pastor Bishop Dagwood Mills. <laughs> And uh, you don't look very rich and very great, but you've shared your little with me. Have you checked how much? Um, let me, let me, before I speak, let me just see what is there. So that's <laughs> wow. 50 Ghana cities. That's somebody's salary. And so, Solomon, I feel very honored, and uh, I want to say that this honor you've bestowed on me will bring the blessing in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. That whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. So I pray that the anointing you saw, because of which you sowed the seed, May you reap a hundredfold of that anointing. And 
may your life and your ministry become magnetic. May you magnetize not just people, but also seats just like this in your life. Above all, if you are not married, may you have one of the most romantic beloveds in Jesus' name. So thank you very much, Solomon. Give me a hug. God bless you. God bless you. Um, Bishop. Please, I would like to say I wouldn't have been here if it hadn't been for my shepherd. I wouldn't have been here at all. Someone invited, my roommates actually invited me to church. I came, and if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be standing right now here. So I just want to say thank you to LP Cadella for, for being a great shepherd to me. To sow another seat. Yes, Bishop. Yeah. I want to say thank you so much for showing me so much love. When, when I came to the church, Bishop, she loved me so much. She, she has loved me so much. Even, even at times I, I didn't do the right thing. She, she, didn't, she never complained or rebuked me. She just, just loved me all the time. So I just want to say thank you so much, LP Cadella. Thank you so much, Bishop. Wow. Wow. Now you can see somebody who has used his small gift very wisely. Very wisely. He will be remembered by this bishop who doesn't know him. Let me tell you, in this world, eh, to be known is more. You see, when people went to him and said, I did great work, I cast myself, but I don't know you. It's, it's more important that I know you than the other things that you have I don't know you. To be known by name is more important than the things you are doing. If you don't know, I'm telling you. Yes. Now he's going to remember. Him. And then you have his phone number. Yeah. And then also he has sown the seed because the one who cared for his soul and brought him to church, went to look for him, followed him up, and everything is Cadella. So he has fulfilled Galatians 6 6 even more than with Bishop Ogo. Bishop Ogo was just, I mean, like a prominent personality who he saw moving around and he just felt, let me sow a seed. So the Galatians 6, 6, 7, it's really coming by the seed that he sowed in Cadella's life more than anything else. Yeah. He has used his gift very wisely. Don't be surprised if he reaps great harvest from it. Unlike somebody else who will be given this same hundred cities and say, hey! Today I'm buying wache rice, 10 cities. Meat, how much? 10 cities. What? Willie? Malt? Uh, you buy macaroni. You buy, uh, you buy gari. You buy giza. You buy a uh, salad. 
you buy egg, you buy sausage, you buy plantain, you buy uh, fish, you buy uh, uh, beans, you buy uh, you, you buy Malta Guinness, you buy uh, you buy Avaros, then you call your friends, you invite friends to come and join you, then you spend the money. That's the end. How much will you use? You use about, let's say, 70 CD with your friends. You are, you, are, you are spreading with your friend. You are spreading them that you've got money on you. So you want them to know that, yeah, there is money. Yeah, you, you, are, you, are, you have some money on you, so you spread them. Wow. Sit down. Yeah. Not everybody uses his gift wisely. You may be gifted, but not everybody uses the gift wisely. He has used the gifts wisely. He has used the gift wisely. He has sown a seed. Yeah. Wow. You know, I feel very sad when I see people who are gifted. Because some people, the gift is there from early. You can see you are gifted in this, gifted in that. No hard work. No wisdom. Wickedness. Hmm? You see, this camp is, I, it is my gift. It's a gift that I used to have a camp. Why? I was just meeting with some people on Sunday. I said, oh, let's have a camp. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I just came. I just came to talk to you. Yeah. I just came to chat with you. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need to have a, a note, something that I'm coming to say to you, to stay with you for three days, to talk to you for three days. Yes. Is it, is it, and it, does, it, does it look like I'm struggling? Oh. Yeah. But I could have not used my gift. So this week, I'll, I'll just be in the house. Resting. That's how people use their gift. They don't use it. They don't use it at all. That's all. So, brothers and sisters, giftedness is what now leads you up to the next level. To a high level of fulfilling ministry at a higher and greater level. Long before we can say that you are gifted you'll be practicing your mission and so many things without any gift. I started the church. I felt God had called me. I was standing in front of um, uh, Sabah Hall. And I said, I believe God has called me. I believe God has called me. And I will be a pastor. That was around probably 1986. 86, 86 or 87. It was when I was in 1988, after I had already started a church, we were just a few in the room. That is when the power of God came on me and I heard a voice say, from today you can teach. That's when I had the gift. And even after that, you, 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 it is some people who say slight difference. And you see, there was, there was a sister, she noticed the slight difference, but it's not much. Solomon's life is not much different from these other people because of the hundred city. Even this guy who was going to spread, stand up, he was going to use the money to buy 70 CDs watching for all his friends. When he is even full, how much can go into his stomach? He was going to buy Malta Guinness and Alvaro. Wow. How many are prepared to operate even without the gift? Hmm. How many realize a lot of gifted people don't use their gifts? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Michael Jackson was gifted. From it was he was he was if you see him singing, 
when he was small like this. You should see, I have documentaries on, on Michael Jackson's life. You see him like a child sinking. High across latitude. Here, here, there. I mean, excellent. More than a grown up. He was, he was like this. He was more like this. When he was 25 years old, that is when he made Thriller. He was 25 years old. He became the largest selling ever. And when they made it, he put on a video. People said, oh, no, no, this is not something. It cannot really work. It's not very good and so on. It took three to four months before they played. Because it was too long. It was 15 minutes long. He said, it's too long. Video, we don't have whatever. It was the first time a video came like that. Then it started to sell and sell and sell until we had multi, 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 multi millions. A gift just puts you out there. 25 years old. How old are some of you? Yeah. Giftedness is very wild, though. When you are gifted, you can dance, you can sing, you can do everything. It doesn't mean you even end up well. So don't concern yourself too much. Oh, I want the gift of music, the gift of uh, uh, this, the gift of that, the gift of that. Look, but check your separation. Check your what? Separation. separation. Check the what? Mercy. Respond to the mercy. Check the what? The mysterious will. Check the what? The call. Is there a call? Check the mysterious purposes. Why is God doing this? Flow in it. Flow in it. Flow in it. Just keep using it. Keep doing 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 it. Then he will pop on you the gift. And the gift will suddenly change the level. I always remember one day I was preaching Tuesday service. Tuesday service. Tuesday service in Kolebu. The maximum people who attended Tuesday service was about eight. Yeah, eight people. We sat around like this. And I was the same person Tuesday. All the preaching I've had on Tuesday, weekday. Now I don't do Tuesday, I do Thursday. That's why I'm here. Thursday. I don't do church, I do Thursday. It's the same weekday. This is my weekday service. My weekday service is the camp. God, the reason why I'm using it, I realize that oh, that's my gift, so I should use my gift. <laughs> I'm just trying to use my gift. I don't want to struggle. Yeah. Round. Keep doing it. 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 Tuesday several. I remember there was a man. I was talking about marriage. He said, I would like to see when you get married. There were about eight people. Yeah. When the church responded, we made two circles. Tuesday service. Nobody will come. Nobody will come. Kolebu. Nobody. A Beniza Secondary School student. They will come to the school. A Beniza Secondary School. A Beniza Secondary School. <laughs> These were the members we had in the church. <laughs> a Beniza Secondary. Do you know a Beniza Secondary School? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? It's called what? Padua. Padua. That's your school. Mm. Ebenezer Secondary School. Oh. But keep doing it. Keep doing it. Without a gift. Without a gift. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Sit down. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Without a gift. Keep doing it. If God himself decides, he will pop the gift on you. And then it will just change. But even then, he may pop the gift on you and out of your laziness, you will not, you, you not do it. Yeah. Laziness, lack of discipline, and other vices make gifted people become zero. As if they never had a gift. So don't emphasize yourself on the gift. But rather on 
these first ones, the love I have for my God, the separation that has taken place, I will flow in it. The mysterious will of God that you keep on praying, thy will be done, thy will be done, thy will be done. You will be doing his will. You will be doing it, so you keep on praying about it. It will be happening. Keep praying about the mysterious will of God. And then what else, Iris? And the call. Has there been a call? They say, oh, yes, once you call me, I believe it. Gift or no gift. 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 Because even those who have the gift, it's so small. It doesn't make much of it. And they don't even respect it. If you are diligent with the separation and the mysterious will, even to where the gift comes on, you see how diligent you will be. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You see, you can, you can single, but to make a recording, that's where the work is. It's not a small thing. Yeah. It's like preach, I can preach, but to make a book, <laughs> that's another thing altogether. Like what I'm preaching now. If one day you see a book and you see a nice big book, book, how to fulfill your ministry. Do you know the work I have to do from now till you see that book? You you even pity me. Yeah. That is why I say the junction where 90% of gifted people go to the left, only 10% go to the right, is the painful hard work and also wickedness. Yeah. Because if you don't do it, it will not be done. It's very sad to see gifted people who just retire their gifts and hide it. What do you do that is easy for you? You know, you, you, one of the things you should, you should learn to do is when you see somebody operating in his gift, tell yourself, you know, this thing that you are doing, I find it difficult. Like for me, when I see people sitting behind computers, I say, hey, me, I, I cannot look at a screen. No. What is that? No. I've never, I've never owned a computer. I've never owned one. I've never used one. Maximum is iPad. I don't even know how to switch it on. So that means those of you who use it effortlessly, you know, there may be a small gift in it, but you don't even see. You don't, you don't even develop it. Many of the people who use computers and who do things, I have to tell them what can be on the computer before they even do it. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't use it. Many things in the church, I will say this, like this, like this, like that. I will describe it to them. Because I imagine that this is what must be. But they, they will not, they don't come to me and, 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 and say it and do it. Me who doesn't know anything. But they give them using the gift of governments. Yeah. And also the gifts of the spirit to deliver me from evil in the absence of real helpers. True. Wow. wow. Are you there? Yes. Are you listening? Yes. Yeah. And you see, you would prefer not to have a singer than to have somebody who's coming to mess around and foul up the atmosphere. You foul up the atmosphere with a, an unfortunate song. You foul up the atmosphere with mistakes and other things that don't work well. Before you realize the whole atmosphere is, is changed to an unfortunate atmosphere. Yeah. So then, you just do that. You, you flow by the Spirit. Yeah. Look, I'll tell you something. Whatever you can do, eh? And there's a keep gift. Just do it. And stop emphasizing, am I a pastor, teacher? I'm a this or I'm that. Huh. You, are, you are Christian, eh? You are Christian. Just do Christianity. Yeah. Just practice Christianity. Practice Christianity. But if you use your gift, you, 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 you change everything. Yeah, you change everything. You see, that's why I'm preaching at a camp, not at a convention. I could be at our Achimota church having a big convention or at our dental church having a big convention. Big. All the branches, everybody will be there. Wow. Wow. But this one, I'm just talking about the work of God. It's also a gift. People cannot also do it. Yeah. 
Yeah. I just said, we can be here. I don't need to prepare to have a camp. Yeah. I don't, what, I, what, I mean, what I mean is that I don't need like notice to, to, to stand with you and to talk to you for three days. Which for some people, if you even tell them that you'll be, you'll be speaking on Saturday, you have to tell them, will it be in the morning, will it be in the afternoon, will it be in the evening? How long? What are the topics? This, that, you need to give them, you need to prepare so many scriptures and I mean, they don't like it at all. If there is anything uncertain about it. Wow. So I, w- I would say that most of you haven't really got any gift. Yeah. You are giftless as at now. But you have been shown mercy. Respond. You have been shown what? Iris, you have been shown what? Separated flow in it. Number three, you have been, you are praying about the mysterious will of God and it is happening every day. Number four, you've, you've had a call. You all said you were called. Hey, number five, the mysterious purposes of God. You are finding them out and finding the reasons why God wants certain things. Number six, the what? Your mission. Ah, that's what the mission that you have been given the work to do. Isn't it? Yeah. That's what the work is. One work. To be a shepherd. To look for the lost and to look after them and to feed them. Isn't it? And then number seven is what? Visions. How many have had some few or no two visions? Yeah, you cannot have the Holy Spirit without having visions one or two. And then now you start complaining. Lord, if I know the gift you have given me, I know the gift you have given to T.L. Osborne. I know the gift you have given to um, this man, Benihin. I know the gift you have given to Catherine Kuman. Lord, if you show me my own, then I also get to the job. But until then, Lord, I cannot be in the ministry because I don't want to make a fool of myself. You are already a fool. You are already a fool. Yeah. Wow. Keep preaching. Keep preaching. Keep talking. Amen. Amen. What do we have? Number nine. Number nine is what? The grace. Before we do the grace. Now what is the grace? What is the difference between the grace and the gift? Yeah. How many want to know the difference between walking in the grace and walking in the gift? Wow. Before we do the grace, we take a break. Are you changing? Is it not nice? It's just nice. Is it not nicer than being in a club? Eh? Sweating with smoke and beer. Mama Doro. 
<laughs> Senior sniper. <laughs> Amen. But I think it's a, it, is, it is too powerful. It's too powerful. And you must remember the videos. Amen. You must get the videos. And when I mention videos, it goes with the paraphernalia for watching videos. Yes, you must have something to use to watch. It is the watching, watching, watching that changes you. Because when you watch the video, you are deploying the audio dimension and the video dimension. So the video has what we call a multiplier effect. It does more than the audio. Even though the audio is very important when you are on the go, but you must have time to sit down and watch. Are you with me? Yes. So look for it after this camp Sunday. Go to the uh, media team or where they are sold and find out, do we have the videos? I'm, I'm waiting for the videos. Amen. So all the... Um, Members of the All Job Committee, please see Lady Pastor Lulu, All Job Committee, you know yourself, the Chief Executives, All Job Committee. We are all streaming out of here to cool ourselves and to cool the room for 30 minutes. So hang around, don't go too far. 30 minutes is just around the corner, don't go too far. When we clap, you come back, amen. So, all job committee, see Lady Pastor 